how's everybody doing? This is Mark Fisher. First, we have Trump declares national emergency. Amazon pulls out of New York and Democrats start arguing. Lots of hypocrisy there. And the dumbest bill in America. This is Mark and the Millennials. This is Mark Fisher with Ryan Brady, Squirrel. How's it going, everybody? And Andrew Fuji, Fulginiti. <laughs> hey, Mark. How's it going, guys? Good. So, so first, Trump declares a national emergency over the border wall. Uh, we have a clip on this. We just want to start with a clip because it kind of speaks for itself. Here it is. So I'm going to be signing a national emergency. And it's been signed many times before. It's been signed by other presidents. From 1977 or so, it gave the presidents the power. There's rarely been a problem. They sign it. Nobody cares. I guess they weren't very exciting. But nobody cares. They sign it for far less important <laughs> things in some cases, in many cases. <laughs> We're talking about an invasion of our country with drugs, with human traffickers, with all types of criminals and gangs. Mr. So, Brady, what do you think about this? You have some information about this, about other presidents signing uh, these kinds of orders. Yeah, so President Trump, throughout a, a year date, 1970-something, as he said it, close to it. So, according to Snopes, they, ver they verified it as a true statement, what the president said. And specifically, they're pulling from the Brennan Center for Justice. At the time of President Trump's declaration of a national emergency concerning the southern border of the United States in February 2019... Some 58 national emergencies had previously been declared by various presidents since 1979, with 31 of them still in effect as of February 2019. So all this concern of a national emergency almost seems kind of not warranted. Yeah, but this is this a national emergency in your opinion? I mean, is it a national emergency when 10,000 people come to the border? Is it a national emergency when 10,000 people come to your front door? Well, I think he's finally calling it that because it's been kicked down the road for several decades because political parties don't have the political will to do it, and he's finally going to die on the sword, it seems, or sure. he's going to invest the capital on it. Fuji, national emergency. What do you think <laughs> about that? Well, first, can we just say that listening to that clip, does, is there any president in the history has ever sounded more like a mob boss when he like <laughs> puts the – I mean, he's like – it, we're gonna do this and uh, it's done you know we're gonna do it it's done we're doing this it's, and here's why it's because I said so it's like I love listening to him speak because it's just, it's just yeah. don't get along you're gonna have a broken right. right. and right. I'm gonna have a cannoli <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's but um <laughs> leave the yeah. gun leave the gun take the cannoli right exactly yeah, there you go. godfather <laughs> <laughs> no but in all seriousness I mean um yeah I think I I shared Ryan's, you know, concern. I, I think I was a little weary that, you know, people talk about precedent in my set. Yes. Um, but I think there's no debate over the fact that he has the right to do this. I mean, as the president, I think Congress passed the law that says he could do this. Gerald Ford um, signed A lot it. of people like to point to, you know, if they say, oh, if you're a constitutionalist, you can't. Because, you know, I think. Uh, it'll Chris, set a precedent. It'll because set maybe a precedent, right. Some future Democratic president will, will create a national emergency over climate change. Or gun right. violence. And or, or gun right or gun violence and try to take away you know everybody's guns. I mean that's certainly a possibility. Yeah, but I I agree with Ryan though. Like, look, it, tr Trump made a promise right in, in his campaign. This this president more than any other in the past has kept his campaign promises. This is probably the biggest one that he made on the campaign trail was that he's going to build a wall and he's going to solve the immigration problem. Like Ryan Absolutely. said, this is a this is an issue that has been kicked down the road for decades. And he's going to do it at all costs. And if this is what it has to do, then, you know, I'm okay with it. Yeah. And, and of course, another funny thing about this is Trump was in El Paso. He was speaking to a huge crowd. And then Beto decided to shadow his rally and also, you know, thought he was going to be speaking to a big crowd. Beto, of course, against the wall, Trump for the wall. And we have a clip on this. It's pretty funny. Here we go. We know that walls <laughs> do not save lives. Walls lives. We stand for America and we stand against walls. We know totally dude. No <laughs> in which we can sacrifice some of our humanity to gain a little more security. And here's President Trump laying into the Texan. We were all challenged by a young man who lost an election to Ted Cruz. Hey, you're supposed to win in order to run. <laughs> but a young man who's got very little going for himself, except he's got a great first name. He is 
He challenged us. So we have, let's say, 35,000 people tonight, and he has 200 people, 300 people. <laughs> so he only had 300 people. Beto only had 300 people at his rally. Trump, of course, had tens of thousands of people, plus there are people outside who are watching it on the big screen. And uh, it kind of tells you a little bit about these two individuals and also what's important to the people in Texas and El Paso in particular, because they were directly affected by this immigration and human trafficking and crime and so forth. What do you guys think about this? Well, well first, let's, let's look at the, what Beto said. The, the quote is, Walls do not save lives. It's like, are you serious? I mean, the, 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 I can think of a lot of violence. There was violent... a fence behind him when he was speaking. <laughs> right. Yeah, he exactly. Was keeping up yeah, it was keeping out people. I mean, I can think of a lot of violent criminals and murderers that are behind walls for good reasons because, you know, we're protecting the, the populace from people that will kill them. And I'm not sure how walls end lives. I'm not sure about that quote. That's, Construction a, great, that's a great accidents. thing to run on, right? Walls end lives. I right, mean, yeah, here's exactly. Here's Beto work. Vote for him. 2020. Yeah, I was going to say they end lies through construction accidents, just so you know. Historically, it's Great Wall of China. Fun stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or Han Solo and Star Wars get frozen in a wall, kind of. Yeah, yeah. And here's the Carbonite. thing. <laughs> here's the thing I find absolutely fascinating is when you watch all the different, uh, you know, the, the news media, of course, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, CBS, ABC, so forth. They all cover different parts of these rallies. They all call. They all cover different parts of the you know national emergency that Trump declared. But CNN, they covered how important it was that the butterflies be protected because CNN was really concerned about the wall affecting a butterfly farm. Here's CNN. Along a quiet stretch of the Rio Grande in South Texas, there's a place that's just home to butterflies hundreds of different species. And Mariana Wright has spent the last two years fighting to keep President Trump's border wall from cutting through the 100 acres of the National Butterfly Center in Mission, Texas. Here, Sylvia, where they just came and put all these stakes out. They'll be starting on this federal piece of land. Last year, Congress approved the construction of 33 miles of new border barrier in the Rio Grande Valley, and construction is about to begin in the coming weeks. Yes, because butterflies matter more than national security. And <laughs> butterflies apparently can't fly over a border wall and can't fly through the slats if they're steel slats. So you guys, what are you guys I think see? CNN's mischaracterizing what Trump is trying to do here. He's not trying to prevent the butterflies from being in the United States. He's only trying to prevent the Mexican butterflies from being That's in the United right. States. It's, it needs to be a clarification on that one. Well, maybe she can write an exception form in where they don't build a wall during the sanctuary and they build everywhere else. And then all of a sudden she has a flood of migrants going through her butterfly farm, ruining it. Exactly. And of course, you know, why don't you just like expand the area on the American side and also expand the area on the Mexican side? And, you know, I think butterflies are attracted to certain kinds of you know, flora and mm -hmm. so forth. I mean, aren't they? I mean, yeah, so my, mom, my mom has a, it's literally called a butterfly bush. I mean, that's not the technical term for it, but if you plant it, they will come. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but what if a bunch of uh, folks coming from, you know, south of the border decide to dress up like butterflies and we have a butterfly <laughs> gate that they can get through, you know, maybe we might let them through then because CNN like a, is so like concerned. A, like a cat door in your house, you just have a butterfly door just so they can exactly. make, cross through easily. Yeah. <laughs> so Ryan, doesn't this tell us everything we need to know about the media and how out of touch they are with the American people because they're so concerned about butterflies? I think it's just a frenzy that they're just so against and biased against Trump. Granted, maybe his delivery style is a little too brash. It's like, whoa, we got to watch what he's saying. This guy's a little unhinged. But then, you know, if it was coming around for someone that's maybe more well-spoken, I say, maybe not left, more of a showman, more just tight-up politician, you wouldn't have such an aggressive action to find these little anecdote stories saying, nope, this is ruining people's lives. Here you go. Yeah, they didn't, of course, CNN didn't bother, nor did MSNBC talk to anyone who has been a victim of crime as a result of human trafficking or as a result of uh, murder or what have Angel you. moms. Yeah, right, exactly, the angel moms. I mean, no, they're concerned about butterflies, right? Because that's the most important thing that we need to be talking about I when it comes the to the border wall. Aiming for the environmental angle of this, because it would technically disrupt uh, land migra land animal migratory patterns. But then again, I don't know. Yeah, you mean the migratory patterns of humans crossing the border? Yeah, That's what yeah. You're talking about. You know, <laughs> blend in with the deer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I did look uh, online and I found out that, and of course, New York is a lot different than Texas, I'm sure. But you know, there are butterflies on the East Coast. There are butterflies in the Southwest as well. And it says, you know, butterflies have been known to fly a thousand feet high. You know, you can see them. Mm -hmm. Look out the window, you might see them when you're in the Empire State Building. So, in theory, they can fly over the wall. 
So it's really possible, CNN. You might want to like do your homework and actually find out what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I think that this this story, like this antidote, you know, from CNN is it's a mockery of what you know Trump's trying to accomplish, and you know it really does nothing for CNN. It does nothing to you know deter people from you know pushing for the border wall, but it's 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 a mockery. And it's, exactly. Know, yeah. And this, subject number two: We have Amazon cancels their plan for HQ2 in New York. Um, is this cronyism versus socialism versus capitalism? And will the real Cuomo, Governor Cuomo, stand up? We have a clip <laughs> of Cuomo, and here's and I have to set this up because Andrew Cuomo, Governor Governor Cuomo, Governor Cuomo of New York was was fighting like tooth and nail against the tax reform bill of 2017. He thought it was the most. He was thought it was an awful bill. He was going to sue. He was going to sue the U.S. government for passing the bill because it limited salt deductions, among other things. He thought it was a terrible idea because it helped the rich. It wasn't going to help businesses and so forth. Well, here's Governor Cuomo talking about the Tax Reform Act of 2017, and this kind of will play into his his reversal on Amazon, what he did for them. So let's hear it. Look at the bill. Uh, They started by saying that they were going to do a cut for the middle class, the working men and women. Uh, It was a bait and switch. It has nothing to do with the working men and women. The theory was we'll give a tax cut to the rich and to the big corporations, and we hope the corporations will pass it on in terms of higher wages. Uh, Yes, they might, or they may dividend it out, they may put it in their pocket, or they may buy a house in the south of France. (laughs) <laughs> so, of course, that would be terrible. God forbid someone succeeds and, and invests money as a result of the Tax Reform Act of 2017. But that was Andrew Cuomo then. And then he decides, of course, fast forward to give a $2.5 billion tax break to Amazon, which then, of course, blows up because, you know, our AOC and a lot of other far lefties decided that they were going to oppose it because, you know, this was a bad idea, bringing 25,000 jobs to, to New York. Um, so here's here's Andrew Cuomo talking about and, and absolutely upset about the Amazon deal blowing up. We had 234 cities that competed for this. This was the grand prize from an economic development point of view. That political opposition in and of itself, without merit and without fact, and say, I'm going to allow political opposition for the sake of politics to stop. Yeah, that sounded like Andrew Cuomo a year before when he was complaining about the tax reform act. <laughs> so, but not that actual clip was Andrew Cuomo upset over the Amazon deal. What do you guys think about this whole thing? It's hypocrisy. Yes. <laughs> I mean, this is blatant hypocrisy. It's, oh, tax cuts only work when they benefit you. And when you propose a tax cut, then it's good. But for anyone else, it's bad. I mean, th- this is the most blatant form of hypocrisy. And they totally screwed themselves out of a great deal for their city. And I actually have a quote here from a snippet from Newsday where they have Howard Zemsky, CEO of Empire State Development, the state's primary business aid agency, testified before the state legislature that that Amazon's proposed headquarters will bring 25,000 jobs to the city. That's huge. They will produce $27.5 billion in tax revenue over 25 years. The positions will be paying more than $150,000 per year on average. On and average, each person? The, 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 most right, of the jobs average. will be that much. So high-end jobs. Though. Exactly. In oh. tech jobs, and there's also the tertiary benefits of corporate social responsibility from Amazon because they're more of a forward-thinking company. And on top of that, all these benefits outweigh the three billion dollar tax incentive that's going to be paid out over ten years. What was, that, was the original deal? Incredible. Yeah, but I mean, I I, I truly believe. I mean, I, <clears throat> I get what you guys are saying, but I do think there's like an element of crony capitalism in here. I mean, we've got a, a company, Amazon. You got Jeff Bezos. You know, the the richest man in the world. Right, mm-hmm. and this company makes billion dollar profit margins. Mm-hmm. Why do they need a tax break? I don't I hear Google <laughs> asking for tax breaks. Yeah, exactly. To that end, another example of you can see this crony capitalism play out is our football teams. Hey, we'll leave the city unless you build us a new stadium, but we'll only pay like ten percent of the stadium build. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, and this is a fascinating subject because the Democrats in New York, of course, are now arguing with one another mm-hmm. because AOC Alexandra Ortiz Cortez came out and basically took credit. Wait a minute, what's her middle name? Ocasio. Again? Ocasio, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> AOC. There's there a reason we go. to call her AOC. Let's stick with AOC. Yes. AOC came out and she said uh, that, you know, kind of basically taking credit for killing the deal. Here's a clip of AOC. <laughs> I think it's incredible. I mean, 
it shows that everyday Americans still have the power to organize and fight for their communities, and they can have more say in this country than the richest man in the world. What do you say to those that um, criticize them pulling out that you know, the district now is going to lose 25,000 jobs that could have come mm -hmm. there? Well, one of those things is, A, we were subsidizing those jobs. So for the, the city was paying for those jobs. So frankly, if we were willing to give Amazon three, if we were will, willing to give away $3 billion for this deal, we could invest those $3 billion in our district ourselves if we wanted to. We could hire out more teachers. We can fix our subways. We can put a lot of people to work for that money if we wanted to. Actually, you can't put that money to work because the money's not there yet. It doesn't right. exist. First, the money has to be made in order for you to be able to do that. Yeah, so. but, let's, but let's, so let's listen. This is more hypocrisy, right? I love listening to this, right? Because she talks about subsidies and how she doesn't want to subsidize a business. I don't disagree. I mean, that's great that she's saying she's against crony capitalism. That's good. Mm -hmm. However, she believes in subsidizing a whole slew of other industries like well failing said. solar and other things like that. I mean, it, it, it just boggles my mind when I hear quotes like that. If you, be consistent, you know? If you're going to stand for something, be consistent. Yeah, exactly. Final thoughts on this. Wow. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> that was a squirrel comment. <laughs> so next, subject number three. A Texas pot smokers, plural, Texas pot smokers find a tiger in an abandoned home. Um, so <laughs> there's a clip on this. Let's hear this. CBS Houston affiliate KHOU says a couple of people who went into an abandoned home yesterday to smoke pot found a tiger inside. They called authorities who tranquilized and removed the tiger. Officials say it was well fed and in good shape, but it could have broken out of its loosely secured cage and gone out and done things that tigers do. <laughs> this, this reminds me of the hangover, you yep. know, when the guy's broken. To Mike There's a Tyson's tiger in the house. bathroom, yeah. <laughs> and they, they stole the tiger. From Mike Tyson. <laughs> tranquilized it. <and> so <laughs> With Put it inside the car. <laughs> right. so, Love that movie. Thoughts, thoughts on this, Fuji? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't blame those guys for... I mean, I probably would have never even called the police. I would just run as far, because, I mean... Someone who owns a tiger, it's it, you, they're probably either Mike Tyson or you know Pablo Escobar type person. It's like uh, I don't want to be Benji caught Madden near. Good Charlotte has a tiger, I think too. Really? Yeah, I think so. One of the Madden brothers. From I think Beto, Beto uh, was with them, uh, you know, smoking some pop before he went to El Paso <laughs> to talk on the border. A bachelor you know? party gone wrong. <laughs> He should have brought the tiger with him. It would have been a lot more famous, a lot more interesting. <laughs> Was it Sumerian or Bengal? That's the question. <laughs> so apparently the tiger is safe and sound for all of you listeners out there. The tiger is great. It it's fed well. Fed yeah. really well. It's like tiger fed, home. Fed what? That's the question. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so subject number four, climate change and the Green New Deal. So we have uh, AOC who um, basically has been talking about the Green New Deal and teeing up uh, this, this huge subject about how important it is to build solar farms and wind farms all over the country. And uh, then, of course, in the Senate side, the bill was actually put in, and Mitch McConnell very smartly decided that he was going to uh, tee up the bill and actually let it go for a vote because he realized that the Democrats were so over the top with this bill that if he put it up for a vote that people would, of course, you know, they probably wouldn't vote for the bill that they put their name on. So thoughts on this, guys. Tell us what happened. Smart play. Gets them on record. Absolutely. So, yeah, Fuji. Yeah, I mean, it's fun to see this side of politics. I mean, because a lot of times you get these super far left or super far right, for that matter, politicians that come up with these grand ideas that they know probably, you know, at you know when they're talking about them, they're not going to actually come up for a vote or anything like that. And Mitch is like, all right, let's put, let's put this to a test. Like, do you actually believe this when you're standing behind... AOC at a press conference and you're like, yeah, we believe in this as a party. Are you actually going to vote for it? Exactly. And the Green New Deal, the idea is that it's going to cost trillions and trillions of dollars. I've heard everything from $30 trillion to as much as, you know, pushing it closer to $100 trillion because apparently you're going to have to refit every single building in the United States. You've got to build solar. You're going to mm -hmm. close down all the, the, the power plants, the baseload power plants mm -hmm. that run off of either nuclear or coal or natural gas or oil. You've got to close all of those down, and you're, going to, and, and you're going to replace those with solar and wind. And that timeline is within 10 years. Yeah, it's going to all happen in 10 years. And yeah. it's non-biding, but then again, if she maybe – the people who put this bill together, this idea, Green New Deal, would realize geopolitically, China is not going to do it. 
India's not going to do it. And once Africa and all their countries stabilize and develop, they have all those rare those uh, nat, uh, energy resources. They're going to be spewing CO2 and more emissions out into the atmosphere. Yeah. So why are we going to hamper ourselves until everyone else plays ball? Absolutely. And the Paris Accords, of course, are all about you know climate change and so forth. But isn't it fascinating that in, in France, they use almost exclusively nuclear power to power their country. And also with wind and uh, hydro. That's correct. But but nuclear is yes. the baseload power for the entire country. It's the baseload power. And it, it, it emits no CO2, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I when I hear Green New Deal, when they keep throwing on this term, I shudder because it's got New Deal in it. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's... Paying uh, you know homage to uh, the FDR New Deal, and this this is a, this is their way of saying we just want to centralize everything and put everything under the control of the government, right? I mean, this is supposed to, this is going to be like the New Deal was, you know, under FDR. This is going to be one of the greatest, largest government expansion projects, right? I mean, they're gonna, the government is going to control the energy market. I mean, it's it's scary. Exactly, and the United States came out of the Great Depression not from the New Deal, but from World War II. That's Land how we lease got program. Out. Hey, thanks, Brits. <laughs> <laughs> so Bill Gates came out. He has a TED Talk about nuclear power, about how you can actually use the waste from nuclear energy to base, to power nuclear power plants. Um, of course, there would be you know significant reconstruction required, and there would be significant... Um, Control development. Yes, absolutely. But the thought process is naturally from the greenies is that no, 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 nuclear is a bad idea because you have all this waste. But now, now, now that you know the 21st century, this is possible. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. this is fascinating. When I when I was hearing about this, because um, I think a lot of people, maybe just an American thing. I don't know if it's a worldwide thing, but when we hear nuclear power, I think we just think of nuclear bombs, right? I mean, everyone's scared of nuclear power. Nobody wants to live next to a nuclear plant. Whoa. But when you think about it, I mean, it's like <laughs> nu- nuclear energy is one of the cleanest forms of energy we have that's super efficient. I mean, like you, like you were saying, mm-hmm. Mark, it has, produces no CO2 emissions. And now, as Bill Gates is showing you know, and talks about, he's got he's invested in this company, I think it's called TerraPower, mm-hmm. where they're yes. burning the waste, you know, these spent fuel rods or whatever, they're burning them to create more energy. So it's it no longer produces as a waste product, but we're using the waste. So there's no waste and no carbon emissions. So it's 100 percent renewable there are no carbon emi- it, it would solve it would solve climate tra- change that's yeah. the most in- that that is that is and of course the the left doesn't want to hear this because they they don't want to solve the problem they want to get keep us continuously in crisis i'm convinced of that mm-hmm. and they also want to help only their friends who are in these industries such as the solar industry and the wind industry i mean mm-hmm. and the battery industry who because- knows they may actually have some stock in halliburton oil <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, talk, Soros. Talk, talk. That was another squirrel <laughs> remark. I mean, we need the squirrels. No, but really, talk about the sub, you know, subsidizing bad industries. Think, look, look back to the Obama administration. These failed solar energy companies, oh, like right? Solyndra. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, I mean, it, 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 I'm sure AOC is on board with subsidizing these companies because solar is the answer, you know, to them. <laughs> they don't want to look towards any other because it has to be solar and it has to be wind, even though it's not feasible. And at I all. highly, exactly, uh, Fuji, and I highly recommend that everybody go on our Facebook page because we are going to post that TED talk on there because it's fascinating. You have to see this to really understand it and then do some research and you'll see that we can solve this problem. Um, And even if you're out there and you think, well, no, I don't think climate change is a problem, then you can certainly agree that getting rid of CO2 emissions completely in the United States is doable. At least with baseload power, it's doable. So that's any any final thoughts on that, Brian? (laughs) Sorry, I was watching Adam. (laughs) Pretty much. Three squirrel more marks. I was like, what? <laughs> well, but just going off of nuclear energy, it, I think that's what we need to do. But it takes what ten to fifteen years to make a nuclear power plant. Yep, exactly. Well, I mean, I'm not sure with these smaller power plants. To be honest with you, I'm not well, sure we, if it takes less time. I would imagine it takes a lot less time. And we already made Yucca Mountain as a spent fuel rod repository down in Nevada mm-hmm. Desert underneath and the Paducah, Grand Mountain. Kentucky. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I just say everyone look into it if you haven't before because like like, like they're saying these new nuclear power plants that use the spent mm-hmm. spent fuel. They have a smaller footprint, uh, footprint rather than solar farms and these wind giant wind turbines. By you know, far. I mean, it, mm-hmm. that's going to improve all kinds of things. We don't have to clear forests for them. We don't have to, you know, disrupt populations of animals. I mean, this. I don't have to worry about birds being hit. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, exactly. And so now we come to that point in our podcast where we are going to talk about the dumbest bill in America. 
<laughs> Production value. Yes. Well done, Adam Gator over there. So the dumbest bill in America is Assembly Joint Resolution 33, Chapter 196. So Assembly Joint Resolution Number 33, Chapter 196. Of course, the state of California, which basically makes the entire state a nuclear free zone. Because if you live in California, the last thing you want is for someone to basically launch a nuclear weapon to your state. Um, and so they've decided to create this resolution and then to send it up to Congress and the president uh, of the United States because, you know, if they send this and it's a resolution, it's not going to happen, right? Right? I guess so. <laughs> so here, here's what I found interesting, right? Is California puts this resolution together and they're saying, we want to get, we want to tell our leaders to get rid of nuclear weapons. And, and here's a line I pulled from it, right? So it's a... a it's from September of 2018, and they've got a bunch of whereas statements where they're, they're defining the problem. Here's the one whereas that I pulled out. Whereas, as the effects of climate change place increased stress on communities around the world and <laughs> intensify the likelihood of conflict, uh, the danger of nuclear war will grow. So, climate yes. change. It's the, if, if climate change is going to make communities more stressed and they're more likely to push the dang nuclear button and start bombing everyone. <laughs> exactly, Fuji, because we're much more concerned about climate change than we are people, right? Yeah. Because, you know, the people would die from a nuclear weapon landing on California, mm -hmm. but oh my gosh, we've got to worry about the climate because, you know, the people, they're, they're expendable, but God forbid. I think Californians are misunderstanding about what's been keeping global security for the longest time. It's called a concept called MAD. Mutually mm -hmm. assured destruction. So if we disarm our nukes, China and Russia will be like, great, you're not going to be able to retaliate. Right, and they talk about that in here. They, they said that the MAD is no longer going to be effective because people are going to be more stressed <laughs> out due to climate change. <laughs> right, because that's really important because we have to worry about the fact that, you know, people might be so upset that they're going to just take a nuke in a suitcase and put it right in the middle of the Yeah, I mean, I, I have a waterfront property and I keep <laughs> seeing the sea level rise. I want to move my house back, you know, a couple feet. But I got a neighbor behind me, so what I'll do is I'll just nuke them and clear up the land, you know, and so, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what Elon Musk said. Just send nukes to Mars and uh, revolutionize the climate over there real fast. <laughs> <laughs> so our next subject is a man. <laughs> this is a good one. Um, a man was in the bathroom. I think it was in a Home Depot or one of those types of places. Mm -hmm. And um, he made a comment in the bathroom, uh, and it was a, there was a misunderstanding in the bathroom because he said that he was going to blow the place up uh, to people that were walking into the bathroom while he was sitting on uh, presumably the, the, the toilet and um, he didn't mean button. that he was going to blow it up but we have a clip on this let's hear this we just had a customer here apparently made what may have been a bomb threat <laughs> KWCH reports a bomb threat at a Home Depot store in Kansas turned out to be a big misunderstanding Someone at the store in Wichita called 911 after a customer reported they'd overheard the threat in the store's restroom. Police investigated. They say it turns out a guy said, quote, y'all need to get out of here because I'm fixing to blow it up. <laughs> two and two together. Talk about taking every threat serious to a whole new level of See something, say Another something. Another witness yeah. said they took the remark as a joke. Matt Uris for CBS Local News. Yes, and short, what, what he should have said was, I'm getting ready to blow this up, but I'm going to give some courtesy plushes, and then before I blow it up. So <laughs> they arrested him. They Did arrested they, uh, this no, guy. Because oh, that was a 911 call. Oh. The police came to the store and arrested this poor I, guy. I think they said that they, they, they actually, like, once they explained it, they decided that it I was mean, just a misunderstanding. I mean, there's a picture of him and all yeah. that stuff. You should have bought a bottle this guy, of before he this, walked in there. This guy's a genius. One, he's either the most courteous person ever, and he, he at least <laughs> warned everyone of what was about to go down. Or two, he just you strategized and said, you know, nobody likes to share a public restroom, right? No. So maybe he was just making a claim to get everyone out so he could do his business in peace. I mean, the guy's smart. <laughs> I give him props. So, <laughs> Pearl, what do you think about this? I mean, has this ever happened to you? Did you ever give anyone in advance notice that you were going to completely destroy the bathroom? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, try to avoid those situations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you probably have your own special bathroom where you work, I'm sure. So... <laughs> uh, okay, enough on that one. So well, now we have Tech Talk. Every week we talk, we have a tech talk discussion about a really cool technology in the United States. And we do this because this is not just of interest to millennials, but it's interest to everybody. And of course, one of the, one of the key areas of tech is human health, right? Health tech. Um, so there's this, there's this product called Lumen and it measures your metabolism and, and basically you breathe into it. We have a clip on this, it's 
pretty fascinating. We're going to talk about this. But before we play the clip, it says Lumen is a device and app that measures your metabolism through the breath. Uh, with the app, you will receive daily personalized meal plans to help you lose weight and optimize your workouts. You may think you have a fast or slow metabolism, but in fact, it changes every day based on the food you eat, the amount you sleep, and if you work out. Here's the clip. This is Lumen, the first device for hacking your metabolism. With just one breath, Lumen tells you what you're currently burning for energy, carbs, or body fat. So you can see what's going on with your metabolism in real time and what to do about it. Breathe in the morning to get a personalized nutrition plan for the day. One that's based on your personal goals and adaptable to your eating habits. And so that is Lumen. It's a really cool product. And I, of course, I was wondering, I couldn't help wondering after our last story, what would happen if you took Lumen into the restroom? I mean, is that like also <laughs> what would happen? The, but no, this is, to be serious, this is cool stuff because it's advanced health tech. Mm -hmm. And um, this is on Indiegogo now. Indiegogo is a site, it's a, a crowdfunding site. You can go on the site, you can invest in this product. Um, and, and basically what they'll do is if you are an investor and you meet their, their minimum uh, investment requirement, they will send you one of these devices when it's ready to mm -hmm. be sent. And you'll like be one of the first people to get it, which is what Indiegogo does. It's very cool, the whole crowdfunding ideas. What do you guys think about this, Squirrel? I, I think it's a great uh, tool, but thinking about the data privacy endpoint on it, it's what kind of da it's collecting health data. So is it gonna be like HIPAA compliant and uh, attaching to your phone? It's, it must be controlling to- Big data company. health insurance companies Pretty getting much. information about your health. And then they send it to what, like the grocery <laughs> stores and they up the price on them, what people are gonna start eating now because they wanna be healthier. <laughs> Conspiracy a little bit there, but you know, it's a great tool. It makes people healthier. It tells them how to eat right. Would you, you buy one? I mean, I think it's cool. Uh, I don't think I would buy one. Well, because it says your metabolism changes from day to day. So oh, it really yeah. tells you what you need to do that particular day yeah. with respect to your diet. I'd buy one. Me too. Yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, I, there's so much noise today about like the different, like, you know, weight loss programs. I mean, Keto there's diet. countless, right? <laughs> yeah. There's different diets, there's different, you know, supplements, all this kind of stuff. Um, so this, this it, it, you know, if it, if it works the way it says it does. Um, you know, it's neat. It gives you a daily thing. It's like, like they said, mm -hmm. your diet should change daily. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if that's true, these diet programs where you're sticking to the same thing mm -hmm. for months at a time, you know, aren't as effective. And this, this, this is a really cool yeah. advancement. I'm mm -hmm. not denying it. it's, it's a great tool. Yeah. I just don't think I personally buy it, but you know. I'll see what other people do. I see, yeah, what, I don't, I see I the alpha testers first, maybe the betas before it goes to main production. <laughs> and, well, and it says you, you use it to optimize your your health and your mm -hmm. weight loss, and of mm -hmm. course, you know how much you work out. You optimize mm -hmm. workouts so that you don't do too much of a workout or too little based on yeah. how much you eat or what your breath is at that particular time. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, that's super cool. Does uh, yeah. not brushing your teeth affect the results? That's a good that's question. A, yeah, <laughs> it's probably. <laughs> <laughs> that's another device. We'll do that sometime. You gotta floss your teeth, future. make sure it doesn't sense any food there. So <laughs> that's the final squirrel wrap up there. It's been so, a lot today. <laughs> so this that's it for today. I want to thank Squirrel and I want to thank Fuji, <laughs> Andrew Fuji Fulginiti, and Ryan Squirrel Brady. This is Mark Fisher for Mark and the Millennials. Listen to us next time. Thank you for listening. Ah.